A bill that seeks to strip vice presidents, governors and deputy governors of immunity when found guilty of fraud or electoral crimes has scaled second reading at the Senate. The legislation, however, excludes the president. Surprisingly, the bill was sponsored by the deputy Senate president, Ovio Magege, a senator who was once accused of masterminding the theft of the maze in 2018. The bill was one of the 10 constitutional amendment bills read for the second time. Is this a good idea? I still have in the studio Obi Ajebo. Thank you very much for staying with us. Still on the telephone with us is Pelumi Olaje Besi. Thank you very much for staying with us. Do we have him on the line? Okay, um, um, once um, we reconnect with him, I will um, ask him the questions and welcome him to the program. So a bill that seeks to strip vice president and deputies of their immunity just coming on the heels of the, the national um, assembly members seeking immunity um, for the key um, officers of the house. How concerned are you that this bill will become law? It's just one more step. It has passed through the past second reading. The bill should not become law because it will set up another round of witch hunting. Instead of doing this, why don't they take a step towards restructuring and let everything... Isn't that a too big a fish to be frying at this time? No, it's not too big a fish. This is a new... This is, this, this is barely one year in a new term. We have all the time. We have about three years to tackle that restructuring piecemeal. And restructuring cannot be done en bloc. It can be done piecemeal. Fiscal, okay. Boundaries, okay. Do this. But all this, look, let me give you for instance. A governor is on, is on seat and um, he, has, he has a bill, he has some money to disperse. And then somebody somewhere wants him out of that seat because the whole thing is eventually whoever is indicted will be removed, Tabi. Somebody somewhere wants him out of that seat, now falsifies things and gives it to EFCC. And let's just say perhaps EFC does not do a good investigation and now indicts him. That means he's out. Yeah, you, 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 you're prompting me a little further than mm -hmm. I was going to go. I was going to get to there, mm -hmm. get there eventually, but you're prompting with this uh, comment about, you know, investigating a sitting mm -hmm. government. You're forgetting that we have a certain power of incumbency. How would they go about investigating a sitting government who already have the authority over what documents to release to you, what's to allow to be um, um, reviewed by any mm -hmm. external body. How is that going to be feasible in the system you that see, we have? That, that means, what it means is that the people passing this are not seized well of the act of governance. They don't really understand it clearly. And they don't understand the implication of what they want to do. They are going to set off a, a box of... Um, a, a gunpowder, which means frivolous accusations, frivolous things, witch hunting. Aside from that, what other implications are you worried about that this bill could bring up? It would distract the governor. It would okay. distract the governor from facing the, the real rule. There are certain decisions that only a governor can take, which will not be favorable to other people. And he should take those decisions in the comfort that, yes, I've taken these decisions in the best interest of my people, and I would and I'll be able to um, defend it. Uh, but on the flip side, what are the positives for this bill? Some are arguing that it would help to put the governors on their toe and make them more careful uh, with it is the not, conduct. It is, not, it is not the bill. It is the enforcement of the various laws we have in Nigeria. If, 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 if like doing electoral talk, uh, they say a talk, if you do this and you're caught on camera and that talk is sent to jail, for five years or 10 years. Believe you me, no other talk would do that. But when he's caught on camera and you now wave it aside, no, no serious persecution is done. We have valid laws, we have good laws, but it's the enforcement. Okay, um, I'm told we have um, Barrister Pelumi on the phone. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you. Okay, uh, because you're just joining us, I'm going to ask your reaction to the bill that has passed second reading, just one more step and it becomes law. First, do you think that there is a, that is a possibility that it will pass the third reading? And again, what is the significance of the exclusion of the president from this bill? 
Well, I essentially want to believe that members of the National Assembly, with due respect, are only engaged in that sort of jamboree. Because I believe strongly that uh, no president in Nigeria will assent to that bill. Because the president who assent to that bill will be losing the support of government across the country. But quickly, let us put the thought line into conflict to look at what is the essence of this bill. I do not necessarily believe that we need a bill to sanitize our political space or to make the Nigerian um, government more effective. It's strongly that the responsibility of government can only come up when we put the responsible people in position of authority. Why is it the case about allowing and removing immunity from governors and deputy governors? Is because the political system in Nigeria has not evolved to the extent where you can allow for such. If not, you allow people who are power at the center to oppress people who are leaders at the state level. Let me give you an example. During the Obasanjo era, and when Fayoshi was the governor of HBC, Obasanjo deliberately removed Fayoshi, despite the fact that Fayoshi has got the necessary immunity and all the needed support as an executive governor. But you can, you can imagine the drama that took place regarding the poultry execution and all of that, and what the, night, the state has to assembly did. Now, imagine there was no immunity for a Fayoshi at that period. The process of removing fashion would have been so easy. Okay, I've also um, seen a situation where during the good luck, Jonathan, before the election, before 2015, a lot of some of these governors in PDC were decamping to APC and they were becoming very hostile to the government at the center. Now, if you have a system whereby there's no immunity for the governors at the state, the leadership of um, whoever is in the position of authority at the center would have used the instrumentality of power to oppress and to molest people who are not loyal to the center government. I believe that the idea of this immunity clause for um, the removing immunity clause for go, go, for governors and deputy governor is not needed. You, what you, was you, the you're saying about it is, is that the national assembly should engineer a law that can actually encourage people with clear focus and position of authority, and that we should encourage the Nigerian people, particularly our leaders, to be also to be desire and be passionate about giving people the needed kind of leadership that can make the country move forward. Let, let, let me butt in and just ask you something you said about um, no president will uh, assent to such a bill and make it law, but you forget that. This president has nothing to lose. He doesn't have a second term to look forward to. Um, this is his um, only other uh, tenure as president in this country. Isn't that the likely... Believe, I do not believe that the president has nothing to lose. And I must say this quickly. If President Buhari should leave the position he's occupying today, and there's a new president in position of authority, if the Buhari is going the good books of the new president, President Buhari might run into serious crisis. President Buhari came on board on the mantra of anti-corruption with the belief that it was the narrative and the political experience of the Nigerian people. Well, you and I will agree that President Buhari's administration has been fought with a lot of corruption and corrupt activity. And so if we have a new government tomorrow who is willing to probe and to expose the Buhari's administration, I mean, the president as a person would not like such an experience. So I believe that the president, even when he's leaving this position, will also, as a human being, as a human being, want to tidy his office and ensure that he put in place people they can trust. And so thinking about politics and government. You don't, you don't see, uh, the line is know. breaking, so I need to get as much of you as I can now. You don't seem to think that there is uh, much good in this bill, but... Uh, Taking away some of the issues you've raised, what could be uh, the likely positives from this bill should it um, uh, get the opportunity to become law or if there are fine tuning that is done to it? Well, then every society will always evolve. If tomorrow the law is passed and the president has sent to it, I mean, the Nigerian society will have to adapt to the new dynamics. And, um, we expect also 
that this will encourage some degree of improvement in governance. But for me, I believe that there are a lot of laws that are put that are in place to check people who are in position of authority, and these laws are not effective. For example, talk about declaration of assets. You only hear about declaration of assets when the government at the center is willing to deal with someone within uh, within the uh, structure. Apart from that, the I mean the panel has not done so much. President of democracy probably have attempted to just about four cases only. How many people have been convicted by this panel or by this tribunal? So the thing is this: we have a lot of, for example, if you to go to the state level, we have um, the legislative arm of government, judiciary, and all. But in all of the 30 states in Nigeria, the legislative arm of government are subservient to the executive, mm -hmm. and they are doing absolutely nothing. They are more or less political appointees, and that's the unfortunate thing. So my belief is this, that this bill that is being proposed and being promoted as a national assembly may look so good with the Nigerian people, but anyone who is conversant with the Nigerian political experience will understand that when it gets to a point, that the bill might not be the light of the day. But honestly, we must also encourage those who are behind the scenes. But I believe that if not in the near future, and the fact that this bill as we comment, it will become something very useful. Or, I mean, a source, you know, it, uh, a source of catalyst for okay. political experience. Um, let me ask you, the bill has been taken to the Constitution Review Committee for, you know, more legislative work to make recommendations and see uh, what areas uh, can be improved on. Do you think that the bill as it stands, if there, um, um, what, what areas would be reviewed to make it um, a little bit more palatable or that will justify its presence in the Assembly? First of all, if you ask me, and I was in the National Assembly, I'll tell them to scrap the whole bill in entirety. We have laws that put these governors under checks. But like I was saying, there's no will to enforce those laws. So why are you now bringing a, a bill where there are laws that can check me these governors? I, I, I don't, but if, going back to your question, if they're going to do something, they will now lay stringent uh, means through which investigations can be conducted, through which the, uh, the, the governor would have, they would have gotten the indictment of the governor. Because if you get the indictment on the governor on the wishy-washy issue, and, and later on you now find out that it, was, it wasn't so, without proper investigation, that would cause a lot of problems. Because that means another governor would have been taken in, and they now have to move that governor to bring a new governor in. But on my own, I don't think that bill should see the, the light of day. Okay, um, just the other day, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you, Peloni. Uh, just the other day, um, the National Assembly brought up a bill about, you know, immunity for key officers mm. of the house and now we are seeing stripping of immunity for vice president and uh, governors some are saying that there's something at play here that we might not be aware of is it politics really or do you think that there is germane reasons why this bill should come there is no germane reason for this bill at all. There are other places, there are old laws, there are old laws that needed, need to be codified and need to be updated that they haven't done. And there are, there are, this, this bill does not make any sense, except if they are looking for a way, okay, if we can't get him out through the electoral, uh, electoral uh, petition, let us get, to, get him out through fraud. So uh, in that case, I'll say there's, there's some political underplay going on. But for me, as a lawyer, that bill should not see the light of day and has no business to be, to be passed. Okay, th there's been argument. Palumi, are you with us? Yeah, me too. Okay, there's been this argument about the intent of the bill. Some are saying it is selfish. Some are saying it is poli for political reasons. I don't want to delve into that. I want to ask, is there any good in this bill for the ordinary citizen? Who are the ones that have put these men in the National Assembly? Now, I will mean without considering that this bill is initiated with the utmost good reason. I think it will not be a bad idea for our society. But our political experiences and the current National Assembly and those who are the movers and the pushers of the bill have shown enough that this bill is 
mere political jamboree. The truth is this. I believe that there are three theories to this issue. Some elements in the National Assembly are looking up to the governor to come around to lobby them and to get some understanding with them. I also believe that some persons are coming up with this deal to distract the Nigerian people from the major issues on ground. If you have a National Assembly that can come up with an anti-social media bill, it means that court and National Assembly cannot necessarily come up with something meaningful. You will recall that just recently that the National Assembly approved or endorsed President Buhari's um, proposal of a very huge loan. That's why the, that we have a lot of loans hanging on our head. So I do not think that this National Assembly is serious. So I believe that this bill is not coming with the utmost good intention, and this bill is a mere political jamboree to distract the Nigerian people from major issues. There is no way President Buhari will accept his signature to trust a bill that will draw certain immunity from the vice president, from the governors, and the deputy governor. And also, I believe strongly that there is a possibility that this bill is initiated to send some threat signal into some political, uh, political um, some elected political office holders in order to compose them to work within the government system. Okay, um, um, Obi, let me, the, the, the sponsor of this bill, some say has a checkered history, and uh, others are saying um, might not have the moral rights to be presenting such a bill, but his job is to represent the people from his constituency. Is this a good representation, in your opinion, from Obi Omar He's from, he's again? from Edo State, and we all know the tussle between the governor of Baseki and Oshio Mali. Do you understand? Now, I don't know which side of the divide he's on, but it's beginning to look as if he's, he's on um, Oshio Mali's side. So if this bill is passed, they can use it to get EFCC to investigate the governor on some top top charges or whatnot. I'm just talking hypothetically now. Okay, um, we don't have much time, so I'm just going to ask you, how would you rate the legislative work of this night assembly so far? I would, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm dismayed. First of all, they, they brought a bill to ban generators. Then they brought the social media bill, and then they're now bringing this. I'm very dismayed. Um, tell me your thoughts, uh, your assessment of the bill so far presented, the work, rather, of this night's National Assembly so far. Hello? Yes, I'm asking you your assessment of the work done by the Night Assembly so far vis-à-vis um, uh, -vis the legislations. Yeah, if you want my assessment of the current National Assembly, I will sincerely say that uh, well, the National Assembly is giving a good posture, but the National Assembly has not done enough and has not, um, has not started at all in representing the people in the real sense of it. Unfortunately, the National Assembly has just been um, a, a stopping part for the president. Because the National Assembly is not fiscal. The National Assembly is not engaging there. The National Assembly is doing doing the line the line has gone the line has gone bad so I'm afraid I'll have to interrupt you and say thank you very much for your contributions on the program. And of course, thank you to you, Obi, for your time with us on the program. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus reports now and we'll return. I'll give you my take. Stay with us. The Nigerian Police Force has launched a police campaign against courtism and other vices, also known as Puka Cove. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, while launching the initiative in Abuja, said it will reduce courtism and other social vices in the country. Adamu called for collaboration between the police, government agencies, corporate organizations, and other relevant stakeholders to ensure the campaign is a success. Pokakov represents a new approach by the Nigeria police in combating courtism and other vices. It is also a way of recognizing the fact that poor law enforcement approach is no longer enough in combating this set of crimes. Hence, the need to work with different stakeholders as well as 
mobilize the people to aid in getting to the root of the crime. I wish to call on all stakeholders to join the Nigerian Police Force through Pokakov to vigorously carry out enlightenment campaigns with a view to dissuading our youth from engaging in cultism, drug abuse, sexual and gender-based violence, and other vices in the community. As a campaign anchored on the principles of community policing, we invite our youth transporters, artisans, faith-based and community-based organizations, traditional rulers, youth groups, students, market organizations, sister security agencies, the media, development partners, and indeed all well-meaning Nigerians to join forces with the Nigerian police and support the campaign in order to save Nigerian youth from the approach of cottaging and other vices with a safe and secure nation. What the position of the court will be remains to be seen, but for now, we know the order has been given to release the deposed Emir of Kanu from detention pending the determination of the case. He is on his way to Abuja. I believe this is just the beginning of a saga, and the likely end will either reshape history for the people of the Kanu Emirate and set a precedence, or... The status quo remains reinforced and strengthened indefinitely. Only time will tell us which way the pendulum will swing, and that's my take. Thank you for watching the program tonight. You can catch up on previous episodes and Plus TV Africa YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and share your thoughts in the comment section. Until I see you again, please be well.